Uh, thank you. Uh, what's under the record? Okay, so Sido is, as I said, um, today's tutorial is about like uh, different um, computer vision algorithm. It's like very far from being, of course, um, uh, comprehensive in any way. We're just going to see like a, a couple of like example of uses that maybe you will want to use in in this challenge. But um, I say here, um, okay, so just confirmation, you can hear me, right? Yeah, great. So yeah, so I have here like uh, a little bit of like uh, what computer vision is. Computer vision is, uh, well, in artificial intelligence, it's like uh, you have different models and algorithms that basically drive information from uh, visual data, so from uh, videos or from images. And these are usually like um, have models uh, that are like deep learning or using uses um, a CNN, convolutional neural network. Uh, like these, like uh, CNN are very useful in identifying like um, uh, objects or, or patterns within the, the input basically. Um, so yeah, there are like um, examples of like what you can do with computer vision is that you can emit classify classification, uh, which is like a, taking images like and deciding like um, this is an image of a cat or a dog uh, for example this is just a, a basic classification kind of have object detection which is basically um uh, identifies like a particular uh, a class of objects and then um find where it, it, whether it is within the the, the image for example and where, like a object um, localization. So it's classification and localization together. Have object tracking, which is like uh, basically object detection in a, a sequence of images or in a video in real time. So this is very useful for like uh, autonomous cars, for example, uh, because they have like to um, identify and track objects that are moving around them, uh, pass, uh, like, um, sorry, Car, other cars, like uh, humans walking around or stuff like that. Uh, okay, so, and then of course, there is like a content-based image retrieval, like just like getting, uh, searching for in in um, in a database uh, for a, based on an image content, not based on tags. Uh, this is useful when you have like uh, information that are just not tagged at all. So you have like, um, uh yeah so so th these are just like examples of uh, computer vision tasks um uh so in our case uh let's, let me just open um the data that we have for a second um Okay, so, uh, all right, so, um, so I just have like two couple, couple of examples here in, in my, um, uh, in this directory. So like, uh, okay, so what do we, like what kind of, um, sorry, what kind of, um, uh, what 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 kind of uh, computer vision tasks do we need for this challenge in particular? So because here in this task you are generating the assets that you're going to be like you're going to put them together into frames that are making the creative. So do you know all of these terms, right? Um, so the assets are the component of an image that you're going to create. Uh, or the image is a frame, uh, basically like you're creating an, a frames and then you're going to combine these frames into a storyboard in the end. But um, you ha we have in, in, in the data set, we have 
uh, we have assets like that make up frames, right? So um, we have these kind of, okay, so empty. Well, yeah, these are the component basically of, of um, let me just open the, the, the ad itself. Okay, suppose we here somewhere. When it's here, so uh, his calculations are correct. Empire is dying. You can't say well. Yourself. You can't say to. Okay, so this is an ad, an example of an ad, and um, we have like different assets that are from the landing and the end frame, right? Um, so like the end frame was this right this is the last thing you see basically and um this is like the cta this is a um uh, the call to action basically um right um okay uh, so there are different these are different components from like just the the end the starting frame and the the landing frame sorry the landing frame and the and the um end frame uh okay so this is this is like not a good example for the, like uh we go back anyway um what i want to say is that like from this data that we have we have the components the assets that make up the frame. So we have actual actual ads. These are just archive uh, ads that uh, Aldodio has, and we have uh, frames. Uh, sorry, we have yes the um, assets that are coming from like the landing frame and the end frame, uh, including the logo, the like the engagement animation, the the CTA, all of this stuff um so in in the challenge you're going to be creating the such assets and you're going to be trying to combine them into frames right and uh, as an inspiration or you have to learn from uh from the data we have have to how to combine the assets into into frames so one thing you can do is that you can try to learn from the data you have like how how this asset where where were they localized where they for example where the logo was put where the like engagement um uh, animation was localized on the frame um uh so yeah so this is one of the so like this is something like like locating assets in, within creative this is something that we can use um like a, a library and the OpenCV library for, uh, which is like a computer vision library. And uh, so I have here like, um, yes, the question. Yeah. Back uh, hey, yeah. Hi. I have one question before you yes. continue. So yeah. we have the assets, right? And then we have the content, uh, data document so the json document which has a description of of what's in the assets am i correct yeah so wh why would we want to for example detect objects from the the photo or you know whatever there is there when we already have it in the json document or or does the is the json document limited to only a few things uh, okay, I, I get your question. Uh, let me just uh, go through the example I have here and then I will answer it, okay? Uh, so I am just have this function. This function is going to local. I'm just going to use it and then I will show you like how, um, oh, like um, what is the goal of having this? So this function is going to take two images. Uh, basically, it will take an image and the asset that is um, on it, and then it will tell me where it, it is localized. So, um, for example, I have 
Uh, so which, <coughs> let me show you which these are. Let me go back. So I have this pair of view. Well, I cannot see it here. So um, how should I, how can I open it to see? How can I save? Okay, let me go. One second. Ah, it's going to like this one. Let me one second. Um Is calculation okay? Um. All right. Let's um. That's the one. Okay. Um. Yeah. So let me share my screen again. Um. Um, okay, so I have this uh, from one of the creatives. We have this um, image, which is like the landing frame or called here the preview. Okay, and uh, you can see like uh, it has uh, this uh, engagement, um, the, C, um, uh, the engagement, um, what is called animation or um, yeah, so asking the user to tap on the screen. And I can, um, so here, so yeah, so the engagement structure, instruction, sorry, this is the engagement instruction, tab the screen, right? So I have it here in the images I have also, this is an asset, sorry, the engagement animation, this is the engagement instruction. So this is an image that shows me this uh, asset, which is the engagement instruction, uh, which is part basically of this frame. So this was like combined together the animation, uh, uh, the engagement animation, the engagement instruction into this frame, right? Which there is a background image and a title, whatever. And I can give basically the this function I have here. I can give it the preview image and the engagement instruction image and it's going to tell me where it is so it's going to show me like uh, you see like this rectangle it's giving me the the coordinates like the top the top left 
and the bottom right here i like uh, the coordinate of this too basically so um so why why is this useful like like what what should i do with this right this is the the question the thing is that um in this case sorry in this case we have um that we have the creative already uh, the creative is already there we have it already so this is like the creative that uh, like was used by aldo before and we have this frame like if they have put together like the background the animation the engagement animation the engagement um instructions and like the logo of the company is all here combined but in your case in for this challenge you don't have this combined to already you have in task two you have to do this you have to combine your assets so each of these components is called an asset in task one you're going to create each of these components like the background and like the um, you have the text which is like the engagement uh, uh, instruction you're going to create all of this separately and then you're going to in task two you're going to combine them together an image composition into one frame so basically this data you have already from frame from creative that were already created before you can use them to learn how where to put these different assets do you get this do you get what i'm trying to say uh okay so so it's yeah. like we we get the location of it from the from the object that that's not in the content json file am i correct yeah yeah so the content the the concepts.json is the text that you're going to use to input in your generate generative model to create these different assets so in the in the um, concepts.json file you have like asset asset suggestions right so if i can open that one um to look at it i mean um i don't have it here right now so i i would have basically yeah so the that json file has text telling you how to create each of these assets basically using a generative model so in task one you're going to do that you're going to input this text as prompt to a generative model for example stable diffusion or any kind of like this different uh, like uh, models or software that you have pro have been provided in the document um, the challenge document um and then you'll have these components in task two you have to compose all of these components in two frames so you have to put them together and then you have we are going to be faced with a choice where should i put this text exactly in this picture like uh, where should i put like um the animation or should i put the the text um uh, like yeah so you will have to, you, where should I put the logos? The logos are not actually generative. This is something they should just get, right? Uh, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. It makes perfect sense. Okay. Uh, Carol? Uh, yeah, so, uh, so the way I understand this one is that we are supposed to do the opposite of this, right? because uh, we don't already have the asset, so we create the asset and we are, we are trying to merge them. Exactly, so yes. If yeah. we have these coordinates, do we use these coordinates for all assets, for all like uh, pictures or acts that we are going to create? Uh, uh, well, you are not supposed to just like, um, to just use one kind of code because it, like you have, uh, I don't know how many examples we have like in this data set, is it 900 or something like that? It's a, it's a big number, right? So we have many creatives and we have like each one of them will have a different composition, right? Compared to each other. So the idea is that, and, and honestly, I haven't actually done this and I don't know if, um, um, like uh, I will tell you like exactly how 
it, it goes, but like you're supposed to use a machine learning uh, model, yeah. basically, and to like to learn from your data, how this were, were like, what is the optimal place? So basically it's not going to be at like a specific location for all of your creatives or all of your frames. It's going to be like, you have to use like a, 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 a machine learning model that will tell you like this is the optimal place for this particular creative based on what I learned from all of this data. Okay, does that like answer question or does it like uh, does this make sense? Yeah, yeah. In a way. Uh, yeah, the, the way the, the, the question that I was uh, wondering was, uh, so we don't have this picture, like the, we are creating a new one. So, uh, I don't know where we are going to is this function. Uh, that's my question. Um, no, so you're going to use this function on the on the on the data that you have, like this archive, okay. big uh, zip file. You had all yeah, of these yeah. creatives, yes. So you can learn basically, like um, for example, here. I this is the interaction instruction engagement instruction. Sorry. The game of instruction. So I found in this one creative, which is like this identified by this number, sorry, sorry. Oh. this ID yeah. five A, yeah. whatever this number. For this particular one, the engagement instruction is localized at this point. So this is like I can go to my like, for example, like I have this data. Sorry. So I have this. You have this CV, like the performance data CV which has like, um, it's a CSV, sorry, CSV file that have like the game ID, which like this ID, this is a creative ID basically. And uh, so this is information about how this performed. You can add to it like, yeah, engagement instruction location. I add another column that like, uh, yeah. So what is the location of the engagement instruction? And that I, I have this data I can input into my machine learning model basically okay. so yeah. this is as far as i get it actually so please think about this and uh, tomorrow maybe you can have like there will be um a tutorial with milky and then you can maybe like think come up with your own ideas and like um, we can have maybe a discussion tomorrow again with milky about how to do this so this is for task two basically right um yeah so um so yeah so does that make sense like uh, yeah it does it okay. does this one makes okay. sense. thank you all right so rodolf yeah hello yeah hi yeah i'm i'm a kind of uh, confused uh, yes so far my understanding was to to use the json mm -hmm. to to generate uh, an asset and then a story board. Now, for your for your explanation, uh, we are going to use the archive data, which is a, which is a set of uh, folder and subfolder with the uh, image images. So, if you're gonna use that archive uh, folder, okay? So we'll go to each subfolder, take the landing and the end frame. If I understand what you are doing, I mean, we need to lo locate the end, the landing, which is the first image uh, and the, the end frame and then we'll combine them to have uh, our frame. Uh, is that uh, what we, what you, are, what you are trying to do? I just want to confirm, first of all, my understanding with the yours, and then uh, say something else. Yeah, so for, okay. So yeah, to just to like clear out this com confusion, um, Yes, let me, I'm going to show you the tasks, like the document, the Italian document. Um, so you see my screen, right? 
Yes. I'm going. Uh, all right. So you have task, sorry, so task two. So that is task two now. So for task two, this is the image and text generation, right? For this one, you have to create the assets from text. So you're going to be using like um, a generative model, like stable diffusion, or like uh, you have a set, like a list here of uh, resources that you can use, like um, to generate. Uh, so for, for this task, task two, the, the image generation or text, gener uh, the image and text, the, it's all image generation, right? Even the text, you are supposed to create it as an image. Um, let me go to the data for a second. Um, so it's uh, here. Okay, so you have this JSON file. So this JSON file has to do with, with task two, right? The image generation. In this, in this um, file, you see like you have like you have implementation and then explanation at some point there will be i don't see it um yeah so you can see here like um second i all right um so yeah you have asset suggestions as it says here in the for each uh, for each um, like for each concept so you have the concept here like ex escape challenge teaser and for it you have like uh, an implementation this is a description of the implementation for frame one frame two and frame three so there are three frames three images basically and then you have as a suggestion so for frame one you have like a background animation a suspenseful animation of a lego city set with buildings, vehicles, and many figures, blah, 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 till the end, okay? Then you have a tagline. So this is a text that should be created and added to this image. So you have to create this background. You have to create the tagline as an image. There is also a countdown timer. This is, again, an image. So you how you'll have, for frame one, you'll have three images. It's like a background. You have a text on it the tagline, and then you have this small image also, a countdown timer, okay? So digital countdown, countdown timer, right? Each of them have a text um, description. This text description you can use in a generative model to create this, um, this image or like, um, yeah, suppose like for background animation, I like uh, use, um, I had like a um, line just for a second. Let me just try it um, somewhere. Like, so this is a generative model and I'm gonna tell it what to, what to create for me but for each of these. I hope that I'm not going to have. Um, so, I so I copy this. This is a background image, right? So I need the description here, and then I'm gonna create. It, it has to, okay, um, generate. Huh? See, like this is an image. Like, um, like I don't know. Makes sense or my makes sense. I have like it's a city, a Lego city set. Fine. I created actually another one before. So this is, an, again, maybe that this is matches the description better. Anyway, you can play basically with how to, like, how to enter this prompt 
and what model to use to create these different images. But you can see this is like, this will be my background. I still have to create and add um, the tagline, your city no limits, right? So I will create this as a separate image. A separate image will be like a countdown timer. Okay, this is task two, the, the image generation. Uh, wait, so this is, this is for task two. Um, let me go back. So this is the source, the image and text generation. I'm going to create these different um, assets. And then you have like a uh, worry about the aspect ratio, other property of these images that you're going to create, okay? Um, in task three, you remember I have three images for this font frame, right? In task three, I'm going to put them together, basically. What I have to worry about is that I have to worry about the location and size. I have a background, sorry, I have a background image here. I'm going to add the tagline somewhere. Your your city, no limits, but where, where should I put it? The top, the bottom, what is the size of that one? So these are two basic things, the location and the size. Um, I also have the countdown timer. I should put it somewhere also. So I have to compose this image into one as a frame that like is going to be like um, the landing frame or whatever part of my creative in the end. So so these are like task two and task three. You understand the difference between these two? Yeah. Yeah, I do understand, yeah, I do understand the difference between the two. Okay, so I, I, yes, so uh, so far I only use the, the sorry, where, where are they? I almost get um yeah so I use tools for task two the generative the generative one I only use this JSON file the data here the text the text description of these assets for task three where you're going to go to compose the image images to put them together then you have to go back and use um um the second data which is this archive right so this um uh which is made of like creatives that are already yeah so these are like this is a one subfolder of this of this assets sorry with this um, data set so um each of one of them is yeah, why, why did I close that? It's not useful. So you see, so this is a frame from a creative that was, this is an ad that was already used before, okay? This is not, 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 it doesn't correspond to the data that you have in your concept here, right? These are different ones. You're creating these new ones here. But this one is, a, is an old one that was already composed. So as I say, like in, in this case, we created a, a background, a tagline, and another countdown timer that I want to put together in one image. You can see in this image, you have like a background, you have uh, a te text here. That's what was put together already. The point is of having this data is that you want to learn from this, right? You can think about this, forget about like using machine learning uh, at this point, forget about that. You can just see like, I look at this creative and I see like the text is put on, on top, fine. It's indifferent and the background is white. And then I look at another example and I will see like the, the maybe the situation is different there. Like here's a purple actually, I will not, this is the same one. Anyway, I let's say I just look at another one and they say like uh, I see a different, uh, imagine this is a different one. And then the text is put in a different way and the size is like different. But I mean, I, you have many examples. The point is that you can look at them and see like, okay, I understand what is like how, what is the best way to use um, the optimal way to put uh, like my text with my background and then you apply this, this whatever you understand from these examples on is, is on the new data set. The one that you just generated with uh, with um, stable division, right? 
okay I, I don't know did this do you understand like what is the difference between these two do, two data sets or like uh, what is it, why which one which part you're going to use the concept the JSON and which part you're going to use archive data um, for the archive data um, yeah it is a bit confusing uh, mm -hmm. uh, for from what you have uh, explained I thought after generating um, the the image using the JSON then mm -hmm. The result we will use the results as our archive data because this is the result we will combine. Yeah, so this Imagine is the result we are going generated, to combine. We will combine yes. this one. Yeah. Okay. So in which scenario we will use the archive data? The archive data is just going to learn from it. Okay. So you're going to learn from it. it as I said, if you forget about uh, machine learning at all, just think about yourself as like a graphic designer that you are tasked with. You are given this component, this like you, um, someone gave you like these three pictures, the for example the background, as the tagline, and someone told you like now compose this together, put them together in just one frame, put them in one one frame, and then of course you are like. A, you can grab the graphic designer, but you are like new to the job. You say like, I don't know what is like, um, how this was done before. Show me like uh, your old data you had or old pay, what your old graphic designer did this. How did they do it? For that, you look at the archive data. You just look at it. Look at okay. it and see how it was done before. You learn and then you just uh, come and up apply on your your new data that you have like that you want you want to compose okay does this okay. make sense i think yes, it took yes. a lot of time yes trying. it does okay, okay. yeah so instead of just lo learning by looking you can actually use machine learning to do that how exactly this is something you have to think about there are resources in the da in the document the challenge document but i don't know like it doesn't include actually machine learning um that much you have an example of like uh, a machine learning model like it's with deep learning actually that does this composition uh but it's not great you can try it it's not great and uh, then you have to look for like um, maybe other examples on the internet or like um, think of your own way how to do that anyway just uh, to just go quickly through uh i wanted to show you other examples of how to use computer vision and uh, like uh, maybe just like go through this image segmentation like uh, in yellow so the image segmentation is the process of partitioning digital images into parts so you have like um, to make it easier to like to handle basically and to understand there is a um, different kind of image segmentation um, like, for example, there is a classification and localization. This is like Im uh, basically, um, um, so for example, in this picture, you can see like uh, localize where the ship are on the picture. I then classified them and localize them. Object detection is, is going to like identify and localize each um, instance of, of this. There is a semantic segmentation which is like we're going to differentiate the picture de depending on like the different like basically uh, yeah different classes in the whole picture um and it's a segmentation is going to identify different instances of the same class uh yeah so yolo is um is one of like an um an object detection uh very popular um object detection uh, tool right and um i mean I'm, I'm not going to go through this it's just like how better performance it has compared to others and like this is like yellow version 7. um you can look at this i will put this like uh, uh, resource in the in the um, u drive Basically, you can look at that, at it. I'm not going to go through that. So other other like uh, uses of computer vision. I don't know if you like 
and find a use for it. I I really concentrated on locating assets within a creative, but um, there are like uh, libraries you can use for extracting color from um, from an, an image. Uh, like for example, this X colors um, library. You can see like there is um, okay, a function that I have here where like um, take an image and it will give me like the the colors that are within the image. Uh, depending on like there are several uh, like um, options or like um, arguments that I can give to this function to define like what kind of output I will get. So I have the tolerance and the limit and number of colors I can get in the end. So the tolerance is like um, the basically the at to what level should it differentiate between the two, two colors. So tolerance of zero, that means any slight difference in color will going to be counted as a different color. Uh, like a high tolerance will going to say to combine like multiple shades together. So basically like, yeah, just to show, like if I increase my tolerance um, from the same image, I should get like less colors because like it combined all of these shade, different shades of brown together into just one. And um, and the light ones are just like combined into white. If I lower that, I will get more. Um, let's see. Like, uh, what did it go? Anyway, so so this another like um, um, something you can do. Like another thing you can do is yeah. So I lowered it, and then I you see kind of get different shades of blue, like very light blue. They are like differentiated from each other because I've lowered the tolerance. Anyway, um, twelve is like the standard. Um, this is like one example of things you can do with uh, with computer vision. There is of course ob object detection, as I said, like with YOLO. There is extracting text from the from an image. Um, the thing is, uh, in if you want, basically, uh, because I think in in the data you have, you have um, you have been pro provided with. Uh, frame, it's a landing frame and end frame, and the assets for those two. In principle, if you think what you have is not enough, like, and this is like something optional you can do, you can, um, okay, let me, just one second, check. Basically, you can extract this stuff yourself. You can extra extract. You can take the ad itself, you can, uh, or like you can take an image and extract the text in it. You can extract the, like the, the different objects in, in the image and like create your own assets yourself. Um, but like this is something optional you can do. So as far as I like uh, in, in my own judgment, this is something optional. Um, this won't get like, the link. All right, um, maybe I shouldn't do this. Um, yeah, it's lock. Sorry. Um. Just want to see if like this. Um. Can be accessed actually. Yeah, basically yes. So you have, you can have as to. Um, actually, I can actually share with you um, a code that you can use to ex like um, extract the starting frame and end frame from from a URL. This you will use like um, a web scrapping uh, library like Selenium. Um, and then basically, yeah. So, see, this is. Great. 
to do that, you have to interact with the ad in, and then you can capture the the end frame and the end. Anyway, let me say for now just that this is optional, something optional you can do. And um, yeah, so let's say that said, if you have any questions, um, tell me, or like we can ask also ask later on, on Slack. Yes, Rahan. Yeah, so would you, sh is this is your question, would you share like uh, the Google Slack file? Yes, I will share that. Is this your question? Yeah, okay. Um, Basil, yes. Uh, so apart from, for example, uh, the ones that you showed us, color text, and I think objects, uh, are, are there, also, with the image to help them the the sound. Sorry, I'm sorry, but the sound is breaking. I didn't hear anything. Can you can you fix this your sound, or maybe you can write? Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh. So three things you show us how to extract, right? Text, image, uh, I mean, text and object from the picture. Yes. Okay, so are, are those three all the all the, are those three the only things we are required or that would help the machine learning model or should we search more more things that we get from the picture. Yeah, sorry. So maybe I confused you a little bit. So what I think you are required to do is only the localizing uh, using the, um, how to say, localizing the asset on a creative, which is the creative. I was showing you like examples of, of like use of uh, computer vision. So the color extraction, the text extraction, the object detection, all of these are examples of um computer vision uses that are not like are not they are optional for you to use like like maybe you don't even like it's not even optional some of them are not at all um necessary for what, what i was saying yes so um the thing i think that is useful for you to do or that you are required to do is to use this, oh, sorry, I'm not sharing my screen, um, but this localizing um, an asset within, within, a, within an, uh, a creative. So basically the function that takes two images and tell you where where is the first image is localized on the second one. Basically the one that tells you if you have a frame, you have a, a picture that have like a background and a text on it, a tagline, and like an animation. So you have the picture that have them all together and you have the assets separately. Also in this, on this, in your archive data, you have this uh, data that look like this. You'll have uh, like a per view, which is a, the, the, for example, this is a frame that have like, is like composed already. And then you have its component as assets. Basically you can use such function which uses OpenCV to localize which, uh, like where is each asset is is um, um, is is localized in in the picture. Um, uh, so this is like the only the other stuff, the other functions I was showing you. These are like, I mean, these are some that are just examples I was showing, and something like maybe optional if you want to enrich your data more beyond what you have in this archive data is it something you want to do maybe you will have to use like an object detection or a, and for example if you want to like enrich your data with to learn more how to where to put your text 
then you will have to use an extracting text function, which uses like a, a, a library that are a, a computer vision library that will extract the text from a picture. And then you can localize, or you can just localize it like without having an image, a separate image for it. Okay. So this is optional. These, all these are optional parts. Um, you see my, my screen, right? What I'm talking about is this one, the local locating assets within a creative. This one that takes two images. This is the function that I think you should use or like you can make use of when you are doing your task three. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Yes, okay. it does. All right, Ikram, uh, um, where, where are we using YOLO? We are not using YOLO here. Uh, I didn't use it. I didn't show you how to use it. Um, uh, like, uh, just an example, you can see like um, YOLO can do this for you. For example, um, you can give it an image and a class and it will find for you the um, instances and the localized uh, the location of yeah say here for this image i'm giving it this is this image actually it's uh, an image with cars basically and uh, yolo can find for you the instances of a car and the the bounding uh, box for each instance so this is like that will be like the output Right, um, but I didn't have. We didn't have an example code actually for this. How to do this? Okay, but like, uh, is there any scenario that we we can apply yellow yellow in our project? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, again, this will be the in the optional part. Probably you can use it to if you want to learn where, for example, where the logo is positioned but i'm not sure if i like um, look because the problem with localizing logos is that logos are um variable so it's not a class that maybe the model will not tell. if you tell it just find me the logo maybe it will not find it to you for you because this is not a clear class but yeah I, i'm not sure how to but again this is will be in the optional part where you want to enrich your data that to the, the data that we're going to learn how to compose images from if you want to reach that data you you're going to be maybe using like uh, yolo to to localize for you um give it Hello. Uh, yeah, sorry, I um, there was a power cut, so I lost my internet for a second. Um, I don't actually, yeah, I will remember that I was telling Ikram that you can use your 
probably if you want to enrich your data, the data will use um, the image composition from. So if you want, if you really are not satisfied with uh, with the data you have uh, in the archive, this big zip file, and you want to enrich it further, you can probably use YOLO to to um, um, to like learn how different uh, components are are localized within uh, the frame of the creatives okay um does this answer the question Ikram? okay good so if there are further questions um, um if there are like uh, please ask on slack or if you have a question right now you can answer it uh, otherwise, I'm going to share like uh, the the, um, the notebook um, on the on the on the G drive. You can find it there uh, in a bit. I suppose so. Everything I'm gonna suppose that everything is clear now. Right, can't stop here.